Anthony, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about the General Insurance uh, Association of Malaysia and also the liberalization of motor insurance premiums in Malaysia. Now, there's a lot of talk uh, going on with regards to this. There's going to be an implementation of sorts happening very, very soon. Now, uh, befe before we talk about the liberalization, uh, let's uh, get into the basics. What's a motor insurance tariff? So tariff is where the prices are fixed, the set rate. So bank and dara, <coughs> you know, in a pre-liberalized market, the idea is that everything's standardized. So policy wording is the same, pricing is the same. There's a little bit of deviation allowed, but generally everyone's buying from everybody else, and it's you know fixed. Mm -hmm. So up until now, who's been controlling the tariff in Malaysia? So that has been the regulators. So bank and dara, bank and dara, yeah. yeah. So uh, with, with what's happening. Um, We've, we've got a new system coming in. So we've, we've been having an old system for quite a while That's now. That's right. Why suddenly the change? Yeah. So it's, you know, it seems sudden, but actually this thing has been in discussion for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And Bang Nagar, to be fair, wanted to ensure that, you know, we come up with a plan that is as least disruptive as possible. Mm -hmm. So when Piam engaged on a study, we looked at markets where they had liberalized suddenly. Um, and two bad examples are China and India where what happened? The then? liberalization basically prices went through to the floor, mm -hmm. completely unsustainable. The market, the whole insurance industry was losing a lot of money, and they basically had to bring the tariff back in again. Mm -hmm. um, so Bank Nagar is conscious that that's the last thing we need. It's bad for the economy. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a phased approach to ma to Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look at uh, successful modules around the world. Sure. What are the more successful countries with regards to tariffs? I think if you look at you know, oh. Pr without tariff, you mean? With tariff. Oh, with tariff. It depends how you look at it. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's any successful tariff model mm -hmm. because tariff, unfortunately, it means that some people are subsidizing others in their right. behavior. So I think it's fairer if insurance is priced according to the risk mm -hmm. that it represents, right? So uh, because otherwise what happens here is bad drivers, people that are causing deaths and accidents on the road, they are paying the same rate as the good driver that is careful, um, you know, looking after the welfare of you know, his car safety and others. Um, so why should they be paying the same rate? He's mm -hmm. essentially subsidizing the one that's the bad driver. Mm -hmm. So I just I can't see how that is a good system. Right. Um, so f so for this change uh, to happen in Malaysia, yeah. now uh, what what does uh, no, uh, what does it entail? Yeah. And more importantly. How is it going to be beneficial to us, the people? Sure. So if you look at it from a fairer pricing perspective, you know, naturally you will get good risks will be priced better than bad risks. So what makes up a risk? A lot of factors, right? So it's obviously the way you drive. The good news is governments have launched this Kajara system on points. Kajara system. So we'll be able to see that if you're a bad driver, you're going to get points. And if you drive excessively badly, you should lose your license. It's the right? demerit system. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Um, there will be more competition. So fellas like us have to differentiate from others. So is it uh, service we're going to do better? Are we going to be better at doing claims uh, faster? And then we can uh, offer additional benefits. Mm -hmm. So you know, if some people might want you know further coverage, um, and we can bundle those things together. So we can actually, let's say, if you are a certain uh, consumer that has certain needs, we can come up with a product just for you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, rather than just going for lowest common denominator, you actually should get much better value for money. Mm -hmm. right? well, give us an example of lowest common denominator. So I think if you, I mean, the danger is people might just go, okay, I just want to get the cheapest one. Now, so on the pocket, that looks good. Mm -hmm. The problem is um, you may get a lousy claim service you may get, you know, parts repairs that are, you know, using secondhand parts or etc. So there's going to be a differentiator. So it's similar, you know, it's an analogy, simple analogy. Like if you go to buy a house, mm -hmm. you're not going to buy the first one that you see or the cheapest one. You're going to decide a few different things: the neighborhood, does it have a view, is it modern, is it this style, that style. So you know, we have to get used to the concept that we need to think about the purchase mm -hmm. rather than just simply buying it. Right, but you know, from the implementation of the GST up until now, there's mm. been quite a few changes, and once again, we have to get yes. used to changes. Yep. Yep. Now, uh, with this new system that's coming in place, yep. um, do you see loopholes for people to work around it or to play with? No, because the Bank Nagara is still controlling the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, with the phasing, for example, in the first phase, which happened last year, 
is the ability to enhance products. Mm -hmm. The second phase coming in July allows a certain percentage of pricing variation, but it's limited. And anything that we want to do outside of that, we actually have to submit our pricing to Bank Nagara. They want to make sure that's a sustainable thing that you're doing, and on it goes. So they are managing this carefully, uh, and they are conscious that at the end of the day, consumer needs to benefit. And think about the other thing. So there's a lot of fintech, et cetera, coming also into the industry, right? So all of this is going to change. So you know, there's already talk about you know usage-based pricing, et cetera. So a lot of models, whilst they're not going to be in the first phase, um, they will eventually come to the market. So it may well come to a point where if you use the car a lot less, you will pay even less than today. So all of this is coming, but if we don't allow the liberalization, none of this can occur. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be conscious of that, that you know, insurance is an industry that is going to be subject to significant change in the next mm -hmm. five years. So basically w what's going to happen is one's going to be able to choose his or her needs That's with right. regards to insurance now what's available out there I understand that there's going to be a sort of a consolidation with regards to all the insurance companies mm -hmm. and it's going to be competition uh, with regards to them yep. which means that's going to be good for us yep. so can you explain this further yeah so if you look at it you know today none of us are operating in a manner where we are competing with each other so you know we all choose our different you know, the mass market, or I want to go after a particular niche of a particular car, or I might decide I, I, I think I want to offer usage-based pricing, or I might do a sort of whole ecosystem where maybe there's travel insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, all bundled together. You know, there's a whole lot of different possibilities. Now, we're going to come to the market and we're going to have to see how does the market respond to all of these offers, right? So the good news is consumers going to get a lot of choice. Mm -hmm. And the consumer, by <coughs> making their choices, is then going to lead to you know further evolution, um, which I think at the end of the day, insurance is under underpenetrated in Malaysia, mm -hmm. you know, so that we don't buy enough insurance as a as a as a population in the whole. Mature markets all purchase more insurance. At the end of the day, you know, whilst it seems to be a cost, when something bad does happen to you, right, you are not in that terrible, desperate situation where you suddenly got to try and find something to fill a hole that something bad's happened to you. Right. So it is significant. It does help. It's shown that economies develop much better when insurance uh, mm -hmm. is more in play. No, it's interesting when you, you meet friends. It's not interesting. It's, mm. uh, it's shocking when you meet friends who uh, meet with accidents yep. or collisions yep. and you know, the car is a total write-off yep. and then um, you owe the bank so much. The insurance only gives you a small portion mm. and you need to top up the rest. Now, this has been an ongoing problem. Yep. Will these problems be, uh, be eradicated with uh, the dawn of this new system? Yeah, so there will be people that will offer, like, you know, mature markets, complete replacement of a brand new car, right? You can get that sort of coverage. Mm. Obviously, you pay a high premium, but that might be something that someone will say, yeah, that's what right. I want that peace of mind, right? I want the peace of mind. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we will see whether people make intelligent choices that are important to them. Um, and I think that is going to be a good thing. So if you listen to consumers in mature markets, they are much more aware of all the different terms and conditions because obviously it'll take a few years to get the general public right. educated. So PM is going to embark on a very big education campaign over the next six months mm -hmm. and more so that we educate What the does market. that entail? An, an awareness education Absolutely. campaign? Absolutely. So yeah. we're saying, mm -hmm. look, you know, you are going to get more competitive pricing, fairer pricing. There's going to be, you know, better service. Um, and you know more products and services and and at the end of the day a significant component of the pricing is the way you drive mm -hmm. right there are other factors in terms of where you live the type of car etc but that first piece you are in control of and if you you know abide by the rules and you show you're a fair driver and look when I talked about usage based insurance you can have devices that will track the way you you drive mm -hmm. so it's very real so we can actually use data to reprice our insurance based on real data statistics. Right. Okay. So what happens to the the goodies like the NCD yep. in, in the old system? Will will that that still be retained? Yeah, that good question. That will be retained. So NCD doesn't go. That's away. like our brim, you know, as poor <laughs> folks driving cars. Yeah. 
Yep. No, yeah. that will stay. That will stay. That's important. Mm -hmm. that, that that's important. But but over and above what what you're talking about, um, the other thing that comes to mind is of course uh, people who you know um, young people who are going out there buying cars. That's right. Uh, getting their first jobs, their yes. first cars. Absolutely. You know they'll need to see something more sensible in terms of pricing. Yep. It, w will things like this be available for them? Yeah. So you know the basic third party coverage still remains as tariff in this first phase. Mm -hmm. um, so you know if you really want just the most basic type of insurance that's available. That's right. not going to change. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important for people to think about, you know, a couple of things. You know, obviously you don't go and buy a sports car first car. Hopefully right. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. um, so you buy something sensible and you use it sensibly. I think you will you should get a fair rate. Um, and especially if we are able to innovate with the usage based insurance, right? Then it's you're really going to get something that's tailored to the way you drive. Okay, let's simplify this a little bit mm. more to, to make this more yep. understandable. Sure. Uh, so I buy a car now, yep. saying it's a, a Proton. Yep. I've got no choice, yeah, but yep. I buy a Proton. Yep. Now, when it comes to buying the insurance mm. for, for this car, uh, what happens? What, what, what can I look at in so terms of uh, yeah, what's so out there? So choices? obviously, once, make sure you talk to um, you can talk to insurance companies, call them direct, you can go to an agent, mm -hmm. um, you can various intermediaries, so make sure you ask lots of questions. There should be, there, I think there will be aggregator sites that allow to show different products in comparison. Um, and I would suggest that, you know, make sure you do your homework, ask the questions about, okay, what does this mean, what does that mean, what does that mean, mm -hmm. in terms of coverage. So think carefully about prices, one, obviously affordability. What do you get for that? And then is the reputation of the company in terms of servicing claims, et cetera, and, you know, something that you, you're happy to deal with. So it's similar to making like any, any purchase, uh, I guess, something that is a slightly more high-end purchase, like a watch or et cetera, right? right. You're going like, to think carefully about the needs of what you want. Mm -hmm. um, so in that manner, it will mean you might have to familiarize yourself with some terms which you've never done before. Yeah, but, but, but I mean... Maybe uh, mm. it's easy for you, sure, sure. You know, but but understanding an insurance policy yep. is worse than reading the Bible in our <laughs> May, you know. Yeah. So we are all actually embarking yeah. on also on simplifying because we know that that is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So what you will see is, I think, much more simplified graphics and terminology in order to make sure people understand. So the th this is part of that exercise that's you're right, talking about. That's right. That's right. right. So. What what are the bigger challenges for you at this point? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, getting closer to implementation. A lot of work. So systems, you know, we all have to adjust all our systems so that we can have different products and they're priced differently and they're different variables. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes on IT. There's a lot of work in education. So we have to train all our agents, make mm -hmm. sure they understand what all these different things mean so that when they explain, are the way we service because we're going to have more products mm -hmm. on the shelf. And so when claims come in, we need to know which one did you buy? And therefore, how do we, you know, service you? So there's a lot of education. This is going to take time, right. because people's renewals is once a year. So it's a 12-month cycle before everyone has gone through that first time of, oh my God, now I've got so many choices. What should I do? Right. So the first year is a lot of learnings, and then year two and three, you know, it will naturally then become better. So in the, part of the, the, game. the first five years is going to be a big learning curve for us. Yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. But I think, you know, with technology, like I said, mm -hmm. it's much easier. Not everyone can go on the net and do searches and, you know, look for recommendations, etc. So all of that and is going to be a lot easier for us to make choices. Right. In the meantime, you know, uh, the people who are preparing for this, of course, the government needs to prepare um, yeah. you know, whatever it wants to do with regards to the implementation. Now, the insurance companies, mm. what do they have to do in order to be prepared for uh, this liberalization? Yeah, so we all work very closely, obviously, with the regulator, Bank yeah. They actually come in and, and also have an assessment, are we de-tariff ready, mm -hmm. right? So there's been a lot of work on that. And checking that you know we have our things in place uh, and we actually get audited by them um, and that's why it's a phase liberalization so they're going to monitor the first year mm -hmm. and if it goes according to plan then they will slowly open it up more and more mm -hmm. if it doesn't however they've already been very clear that you know they would unwind it if mm -hmm. they feel that the market isn't responding appropriately mm -hmm. um, so i think that's as probably as good as one can do and that's more than a lot of other countries have right. gave the early examples right where it didn't go well Mm -hmm. um, so I think we all have the interests of the consumers at heart because, you know, we want this to be a good experience for them so that at the end of the day say, insurance is good, I got something really good value for money and I might consider even buying more because it makes sense to me. I think if we've got it right, 
that will be the sort of message and answer that right. we'll get. I guess the other thing is that uh, you know we'll, we'll have insurance companies who will be promising a lot. Mm. That, you know, everyone will be competing with each other. Yep. Everyone will be <coughs> promising uh, the earth, the sky, and everything yep. else. Now, who is in charge of seeing if these uh, promises being made yep. are you know, uh, uh, deliver uh, proper deliverables? Yep. Yeah. So we have working. So Bank Nagara has a complaint section as well. PM obviously has one as well, and there are other. There's the Ombudsman for Financial Services. That's another uh, body that will help people. You know, if they can't afford a lawyer, etc., you can go to them. So, a lot of it is monitoring of complaints. If we start seeing complaints going up because people are promising things and not delivering, they will be taken to task, um, and they will be questioned, and and they will have to address that. So, complaints mm -hmm. is a very significant piece. Right. Yeah. So, w when you talk about, you g let's go back to what you're talking about. A basic, you know, if you buy a car, you can you can just get a basic if you can't afford more than that. Yep. What will the basic, uh, um, when you buy a basic uh, sure. insurance premium, what's that going to give so you back? So that, is, that is basic third party. So in other words, right. if you have a collision, you know, it pays for the other person's car and the other person, but not yours, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's the most basic. The, the, and that, and mm -hmm. that is going to stay tariff in this phase. Mm -hmm. So that we're not allowed to be aggressive on pricing there. So right. that, that is flatlined. Mm -hmm. So no change. Um, so I think there's a consciousness that that is going to be maintained. At that the that, level. that is going to be maintained. Yep. Now yep. the other problem is our bikers on the street. They're a yep. problem to us. Sure. I mean, insurance is going to be a problem to them. Yep. And uh, uh, is it any different than uh, a cars? I think in the sense that what we look at overall, I think bike insurance is is an area that you know it's not part of the core because the auto vehicle stuff is is, is, is the predominant piece. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, I, we, you know, we, we do know that actually there are significant numbers that don't even have insurance, right? Mm -hmm. So that needs to be enforced. Um, and I think there's a conscious plan that with the awareness that will come out with all the education, um, and enforcement's going to be key, right? So with mm -hmm. this Kajara system, etc., right. they need to take that to task. And if they're serious about it, then I think, again, once all of this is accounted for, if the death rates, accidents rate come down as a result of this being enforced, everyone will pay lower premiums. It's interesting that we always talk about with the implementation of anything, yeah. enforcement is key. Yes. Now, um, <laughs> what are your thoughts with regards to enforcement? Yeah, look, I think with everything, you know, uh, yes, we can always be cynical because maybe there are some examples in the past, but I think this is a unique opportunity where, you know, people can say, look, you, it's about saving lives, so how can that not be taken seriously? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I do see much more messaging, certainly if you look at social media, etc., you know, when you get an errand bus driver, you know, it, it goes viral, the videos, etc., stuff. so it, people cannot ignore this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can see that the sentiment of the consumer uh, or the person on the street is much higher towards people that are abusing this. Mm -hmm. um, so with that pricing, let's say we liberalize that pricing, bus companies, etc., if they try and get any insurance, and we see examples of that, we're going to charge them a fortune to insure, or might not even be willing to insure them because mm -hmm. they're not willing to do it. So then they will go out of so business. So they have to s uh, step up the game too. With they the will have to step up the game, yeah. yeah. And that's a good thing. It, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's been long overdue, so I, I really look forward to right. that. Right. And you know, while talking about enforcement, uh, what agencies are involved in, in uh, are directly involved to uh, the li liberalization. Yeah, so obviously the police force with its mm -hmm. Kajar system. Um, we Malaysia's finest, yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have, uh, so we actually work, PM works with VTREC, which is the v Vehicle Theft Reduction Council. That's already been going for multiple years, and that has actually significantly reduced the number of vehicle thefts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number still is a number, um, but overall there have been crackdowns on syndicates, etc. So we see that coming down. And again, look, technology will help because there are more and more devices able to be put in cars, so they're able to track and know where and how um, becomes more prevalent. Uh, the other thing we've done is we're putting in a, across the industry a, a fraud intelligence system, and so all data of insurance companies. A fraud intelligence yes, system. Yes, okay. and this is something that's a system that's been implemented in the UK. I can think of a few Canada. departments that need this, but. <laughs> um, but the good news is because there are syndicates that operate this, right? So they will target different insurance companies at different times and they work together with, you know, whether it's workshops, et cetera. But because we can, if we map all this data, we'll be able to see where there's a sudden aberration in a particular place. Mm -hmm. And then we can alert everybody, guys, go and check this one out and decide whether there's something going on or not. 
that is going to be very powerful, right? So I think you know it'll take one or two years to implement because there's quite a lot of work getting all the data in a, in a aligned. Right. Um, but we've already had a few companies in initial pilot. Uh, phase two is about to happen in a couple of months, and then by I think by next year everybody will be on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably need one or two years worth of data to go through it, right. um, but I'm very confident that we'll be able to you know flush out mm -hmm. you know bad behavior. I mean. Uh, when you go to the stakeholders, or yeah. when, when you speak to the stakeholders, what are they saying? Because before we got into the studio, yeah. I spoke to my insurance sure. guy, and he went on a rant, and he says, you know, like, this and this may happen. You know, like I was saying, unscrupulous uh, mechanics may yep. take advantage of this whole system. Yep. How can they? Like I said, it, with this system in place, it will be more difficult for them, for sure. And if you look at the way auto is trending, right, so manufacturers are now offering multi-year warranties, you know, up to five years, seven years in some cases. So, you know, they will take care of the repairs. So these guys are going to have a change the way they service and their model, right, because they're going to have to differentiate as well, say, okay, why is it better? How are they going to offer something? And look, like I said, the ability of people to, to you know, in social media to, to complain or to recommend um, service is, is prevalent, it's become the norm. Um, so I'm sure we will be able to, you know, companies that are forward thinking will say, look, I want to uh, position myself differently. I mean, you, you just look at taxis being disintermediated by Uber and Grab and all mm -hmm. the likes of that, right? Mm -hmm. Something that... Long know, live Grab. There you go. So, <laughs> so I think we are in a different day and age, different paradigm where um, it's going to be harder for people to really try and take advantage. Um, and because, again, data is something that, you know, easy to go through and see it tells you what it is and mm -hmm. the way it is. Um, so again, with the regulator being very on top of it, with us I think we want to make sure insurance as an industry doesn't get a bad name because at the end of the day it is a good thing. It is something about peace of mind where you know you can go to bed and if something bad happens you mm -hmm. know that oh, it's not the end of the world, right? Right. Uh, we've got about four or five minutes sure. left and I in this next few minutes what are things we need to be aware of mm. and things uh, we, we, you think we need to know at this point? Okay, I would say a couple of things. Obviously, start learning, um, shopping around. In other words, look at you know. You can look at outside of Malaysia. Even you know, you could you could Google you know what what Singapore insurance companies offer in terms of auto, and there are lots of sites that will tell you you know about what you should look at. And we've come up with videos, and there'll be so do your homework, learn a little bit about, you know, how insurance works because you right. know, a lot of you will have never bothered because it's, mm -hmm. you know, just buy and <coughs> talk to people. So you can talk to us, you can talk to agents um, and then have a have a thinking process in terms of, you know, what are your needs? What do you think your needs are right. and what are you prepared to pay for it? Mm -hmm. But essentially people, a lot of people will be going back to uh, the people they always work with, like, you know, I've been doing my car insurance with a guy for God knows how many sure. years, you know. Yep. Now, people, will, will that still be ongoing or yeah, this is going to change? If, if you're comfortable with that, mm -hmm. right, and you feel that that person's knowledgeable and you want him to do the filtering for you and recommend to you, mm -hmm. by all means, you know, I think that's a good thing. Right. Whereas if you feel, no, I want to do it myself, mm -hmm. and I want to go direct, and I want to do it my... And, and the younger generation have different buying habits, right? So mm -hmm. they're more comfortable with, you know, like the way they take book flights. It's it's different paradigm. Mm -hmm. right. um, so I think there will be many different types of distribution channels. Mm -hmm. And I think the good news is there will be more on offer. So, and you might use a bit of both, right? You might say, okay, I'll do both bits of research. and then, Right. You know. So saying if you're the type who wants to research and get the best deal for yourself. Yep. Uh, and you want to uh, get collect all that information and speak to someone from PM to to to, to see if you know uh, you're doing the right thing. Is that yeah. possible? Yeah, I think your PM will obviously help advise, and there will be we have to make sure that the information's there, and people are by all means write in queries. We're there, you know, we're there to help answer and help guide you if it's something that you don't understand. Um, that is the role of the association to develop the industry, right? So mm -hmm. absolutely. So we're in the month. Uh, we're, we're in the month of April. Yep. Uh, this is meant to happen in July. The liberalisation. Yep. Yep. Uh, from here till then, will there anything that uh, is there anything the consumers need to do at this point? So PM's media campaign kicks off next month. Mm -hmm. So you'll start seeing, you know, TV, uh, radio, news, um, and spreadsheets, editorials, etc. You're going to see a lot coming into the market, and I think um, that will then in pick your you know 
brain and you'll say, okay, let me think about more of this, and then you can start going to the association. So the real pricing, because it doesn't start till July, obviously those people that renew uh, in July time, you know, I think a month prior, all insurance companies will start marketing their products. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the time when you will see it. Now it's probably a little bit too early because you won't get any indication of that today. Um, but as I said, we don't expect significant pricing variation because the first phase is limited, right? They purposely, Bangnagara has asked that we, you know, make sure this is a phased approach. So pricing is meant to be plus minus 10%. Um, that's the band. If, a, if an insurer wants to go more aggressive, they actually have to file the product and get it approved. So um, I think it's a little bit too early for companies to be willing and wanting to try something, you know, too creative. Um, simply because we need everything to be in place. Kajara needs to be, we need to see that that thing works. Mm -hmm. And you know, points Enforcement at, works. Yes, yeah. Exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> On that note, Anthony Lee, all right, was a thanks very much. Speaking yeah, to you. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. And all the best with this whole uh, awareness and liberalization uh, uh, implementation. Yeah, no, well, thanks for the opportunity, right? It's important to be able to thank come you. in and pass the message on. Thank you. Okay.